recording. <clears throat> Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kitchanu Bemitzvata Vetsivanu La Asok Bidivrei Torah. Amen. And uh, I decided, uh, at least I decided, that we would continue this really interesting. Uh, um, Torah Tmima uh, on on this uh, issue of do women oh, do women count and it also uh, in the Machatzita Shekel is this something that uh, they're also commanded to do and it actually all started off with a comment comment by Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai who was disagreeing um, with I'm trying to think of sorry this is doing. Just crazy how this reacts. Let's make sure we get this. Um, where is the place? Uh, it's right there. Yeah, isn't it? I'm trying to think, but I'm trying to think. Oh. Uh, where you put the line? Yeah, that's where we're starting. But I'm trying to think of where uh, Ben Bukhri. That was who who uh, I was the name I was trying to remember. That Rabbi Yochanan Ben Zakkai was disagreeing with him with Ben Bukhri, who said that Kohanim do not participate. They do not give the machatzit shekel, And Rabbi Yochanan says, no, that is not the case. They do. And we discussed why they shouldn't. We went into the issue of public offerings versus private offerings, etc. Okay, M moving on here. And we also had Rabbi Meir's opinion, right? That God showed Moses this half shekel, that what the coin looked like was this Machatzita shekel of ash of fire, a hologram, we decided, right? And etc. And that, that is just Rabbi Meir's uh, opinion, no one else's. The dat, and one should be informed, you, you need to know, the ledat harambam, that according to Maimonides, the ranban and nachmanides, and now, right, we're talking about eagles when it comes to knowledge of, of, Jew, of Jewish law, etc., etc., Chiyuv shekalim, the obligation to bring the half shekel, matchil mi ben yud gimel shana, the yom echad, that it starts at bar mitzvah age, 13 years and a day. Kechol mitzvah tatara, just like other mitzvahs, right? All the other mitzvahs of the Torah. Usvira lahem, okay, and they hold. The afal pi de pasuk kan, that here in this verse, Ketiv mi ben esrim, it says from 20 years old and up, right? Achze ketiv betrumat adanim. That context was strictly to do with the truma, the chatzi shekel that went towards the sockets, right? So look at, you know, you have this background. And we wouldn't even be able to talk about this if you did not know what I was talking about and what the context was, etc. I mean, it's just that we keep, you know, um, unlayering, peeling away. Uh, and one thing before I even go on, there's a, a level of knowledge of a person that's, that's sort of yodea davar mi toch davar, someone who is able to peel away one piece of knowledge from another piece of knowledge. In other words, they, they have this knowledge and from that knowledge, they're able to derive all kinds of other inferences that are, are interesting and original, et cetera. But it's all based on previous information. And that's this, I mean, that's what's happening right now. That we are, that what we're discussing now is based on all this other background that you now have. So here we have this point that the Rambam and Nachmanides hold that this commandment this, of this mitzvah of Machatzit shekel applies to boys 13 years old and a day and up. And, and in contradistinction to the 20 years that's explicitly stated in the scriptural passage. And they're simply, the way they're harmonizing that apparent contradiction is to say that was only that one time. Masho enkein the pasuk hakodim. So if you look at how the verses are stated, right, the adanim is the second time it talks about machasit hashekel, whereas the very first time it talks about it, which is understood to go to, uh, he's going to tell you in a second, that the first pasuk, the first verse, the aire betrumot hakorbanot, that refers to the fund that was created 
to purchase sacrifices. So let's go back just to, just to show you the evidence. Let's go back and check the evidence, right? It doesn't say anything about an age here, all right, in that verse. Just says that there will not be a plague when they are counted, okay? And then it goes, et etc. Still doesn't telling about the 20 years. Here it is, machatzit shekel, half a shekel of shekel kodesh. Extreme gera shekel tells you that, machatzit shekel trumal adonai. And the second time it says machatzit shekel, then it says trumal adonai, okay? And then it goes on to say, 20 years old, mi ben esrim shanava mama. That's Yitain Truman of the So it talks about another gift, right? The second time it talks about a gift to God from 20 years old and up. So they're, they're looking at this very, very carefully and, and saying that's the case. Let me make sure I have uh, the right place here where we are. Here we are. All right. Uh, so that's, that's how they argue, okay? V'lokativ mi ben Misrim. And since it doesn't say explicitly from 20 years old, the chiyuv, the obligation, occurs from when they're 13 years old. However, aval, small little word, however, Rav Ovadia Bertanora, that is the, comment, the doyen commentator on the Mishnah, Bertanora, Ovadia Bertanora, Perek Aleph, chapter 1, Mishnah Gimel, third Mishnah, Dishkalim, of the tractate Shkalim in the Mishnah. Uval HaChinuch, uh, the Chinuch, I think P, the reason he says the author of the Chinuch is because nobody knows who this person is. We have this extant um, halachic uh, discussion uh, that's called the Chinuch, and Verokeach. Hagadol, and this could this is another commentator. The book is called the Rokeach Hagadol, the the major Rokeach, and he tells you the reference right here. Siman Reish Lamed Bet in uh, subsection two hundred and thirty two. Vahagra, well the Gra is Garon Gaon Rabbi Eliezer. No, no, um, excuse me, uh, El, Eliyahu. This is referring to Elijah of Vilna, the Vilna Gaon. The Yerushalmi, he says in his commentary on the Jerusalem Talmud, Shkalim, in uh, this, again, the same tractate of Shkalim, Perik Aleph, chapter one, Halacha Gimel, remember that's how the Yerushalmi is divided up, Halacha three, Svira Laho, they hold, they argue, De Hachiyuv Umi Ben Esrim Velamala. They say, ah, says 20 years old and up. That's what it means. The, the Torah isn't making distinctions here. It's saying the machatzit shekel, 20 years. So we are looking at a machloket here of, of some great minds, right? Kipashtut hakatuv. He says, that's what it says. That's what it means. Ni ben isrim shana, from 20 years old. Deka'e al kol inyan parshazo. They say that it doesn't mention any names, any, excuse me, any ages anywhere else in this parsha. It says very specifically that it's 20 years old and up, and that's who gives the half shekel. That's the mitzvah on those who, males 20 years old and up. Uladat hagra, and in fact, according to the opinion of the Vilna Gaon, Cain he dat ha The gra goes on as far as saying that is in fact the way the Yerushalmi, the Talmud Yerushalmi, uh, um, that's its opinion. That's what it's holding. That's a pretty huge authority there. You know, that's a greater authority than the Rambam or the Ramban. But at any rate, and listen, we're talking about a mind like, like the Vilna Gaon. The Chidush al Hatosaf Yontov. And he says, this is a whole difference, a, a new sort of approach. Uh, regarding the Tosafot Yom Tov, Tosafot Yom Tov Lipman Heller, another, um, another uh, uh, Mishnaic authority. He wrote a, a, a major uh, excursus on the Mishnah as well. And usually it appears the, the standard editions of the Mishnah contain on the one side of Bartonora's explanation 
and on the opposite ta- side, Tosafot Yom Tov, which has to do, it's not explanation so much as discussions, just like what we're doing right now, getting into the nitty gritty and finding contradictions and trying to understand this better, that kind of uh, th- um, interpretation. Shehesig al Harab Ovadia Bertanara, who disagrees with the Bertanora, okay, Baze. So on the same page, right, of the Mishnah, you have Tosafot Yontif, who's disagreeing with the Bertanora regarding this 20 years or 13 years old. So obviously, uh, r- remember uh, Baze regarding this, Velohi ir shedad kama min harishonim kenu. And doesn't man- mention, okay, that there are a whole bunch of people who agree with Rabbi Ovardia Bertanora. Doesn't talk about the fact that, that and Rishonim means, you know, people before the Shulchan Aruch who have very serious, uh, Tosafat Yontif is a Acharon. He's since the compilation of the Shulchan Aruch. This is a major halachic division. And the Rishonim are those commentators and halachists who came before the compilation of the Shulchan Aruch. And the practical distinction is that if you're an Acharon, you can't argue with a Rishon regarding a specific concept, unless you have another Rishon who agrees with you in in terms of arguing with that Rishon. Going on, the plot continues to thicken. V'yesh l'ha'ir nafkamina. He says, one might as well mention that there is a pragmatic application, there's a pragmatic difference, the machloketzu, in this distinction. This, this disagreement, this halachic disagreement, has practical ramifications. The dina bezehasman regarding the halacha regarding nowadays. It actually, this is not just an academic discussion, there are practical ramifications. The fima shekatav be Shelot uchovot, according to what is written in the responsum Besamim Rosh. There's a tr- there's a book by the name of Besamim Rosh. That's a quest of responsa. Responsa are what would happen is communities would write a question, a halachic question, to a great authority, and that authority would then investigate the case and send back a response to their question, and these. These uh, questions and answers um, were actually collected into, they were made into collections, which now became part of the literature of halachic literature. And they're very important because they represent tremendous scholarship and investigation in specific halachic issues. So this particular collection, the Samim Rosh, which means chief spices, uh, that is attributed to another great, these are all these great halachic authorities. And if you study Talmud or Mishnah, or rabbinic literature, you become quite familiar with these, these boys, okay? Um, and uh, he, he also, his commentary, he has a commentary as well that's at the back of pretty much every Vilna edition of the Gemara. But he also is attributed this collection of responsive literature. Simon Pei Tet, uh, section, uh, uh, this would be 89, the Nashim, this is what he says, the Nashim Peturot Metfilat Hamusafim. He says that women are exempt from pl- praying Musaf on, you know, whenever we have Musaf, Shabbos, uh, Rosh Chodesh uh, festivals. Mishum, and this is his reasoning, Mishum de Kevan de Tfilazo, because since this particular prayer, Ikara Ba'a, its, its main purpose of the Musaf comes, the Zecher, the Korban Musaf. It comes specifically as a remembrance of the Musaf offering in the temple. Temple. That's why it was instituted. So, you know, these, these prayers weren't just put together because somebody thought it sounded nice. There is, some, uh, there is some deep symbolism involved in the status of the prayer book, representing this huge, huge tragedy, which we refer to as the destruction of the temple. Okay. 
and I'll leave you to connect some dots there. The korban ze ne'esa mima ot shkalim. And this korban, this offering of Musaf, was done from it, the purchase of the shkalim, those coins. Remember, they went into a fund to purchase these offerings. Umikevan de nashim lo nitchaibu, and since women were not obligated by shkalim regarding shkalim, the ein lahem chelak be korban musaf, and so consequently they don't have. Again, remember we've discussed the possible ramifications. This is one person's point of view, and, and they do not therefore have a share in the korban musaf lachain peturim. And for that reason, they should be exempt from a prayer which is coming to take the place of this particular sacrifice. Another big guy, right? These are brought in the novella, meaning new points of law, new halachot, uh, collection of Rabbi Akiva Eiger, He's an Acharon. The Orechaim, this is a book, one of the sections of the Shulchan Aruch, Siman Kuf Zayin. Gives you all these references. But listen, he hasn't made his real point. The, the weird stuff is coming. So we'd have to say that according to the opinion of the Bertanora, Bahachinuch, the Rokeach and the Rokeach and the Gra. Remember, the, all these boys held that the mitzvah of Machatzita Shekel applies to men 20 years old and up, right? They hold on to that. Al Dardat HaYerushalmi and the Gra who says that this is the Yerushalmi's position. De Pachot Mi Ben Esrim Patur Mi Machatzita Shekel, that a someone who is less than 20 years old is exempt from the half shekel. Im Cain, if that is the case, Lefi Hasvara, Hanal, according to that particular opinion that got mentioned, Ein Lahem Chelek Bekorban Musaf. In other words, someone who is less than 20 years old doesn't have a part, doesn't take a part of the Morsaf offering. You getting the picture here? Umimela, and automatically and consequently, Paturim mitfilat musaf. They are therefore exempt from the musaf prayer. So, just to clarify. Of course. According to some opinions. Correct. Women and men under the age of 20. Yes. Yes. Would A, be exempt from musaf. Correct. And B, possibly then shouldn't be a shaliach because to that. they have no chiyuv? Right, that's the point he's making. That's the point he's going to make. Uh -huh. Did I miss something? Um, why, is you, it, why is it musaf only? I mean, why This is, is a very good question. This is a because very good we question. Because we make offerings all the time. Well, and all the services all, are offered. No, no, right. Mm -hmm. And the point, okay. So here's the difference. I think he's not answering this, but I think I can answer that question because the question is, well, didn't the Machatzita Shekel also go to pay for the daily offerings for the yeah. Tamid? And does that mean that women and, and boys under the age of 20 are also exempt from the, the regular Shacharit, from Shacharit? Right, we the Musaf Amida is strictly on Shabbos and Yontif and Rosh Chodesh, right? right? The right. answer to that, okay, I will tell you what I think is the answer to it, is while that is true, the he, when it comes to the Musaf, that is specifically for the offering of Musaf, but Shacharit, Shacharit, it, the explanation in the Gemara as to why Shacharit was instituted by the rabbis. By the way, this is all rabbinic why the rabbis instituted was also to represent when Abraham prayed, that's Shacharit, when Isaac prayed, that's Mincha, and when Jacob prayed, that's Mariv. So the, 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 the reasoning behind the Shacharit, the, the daily Amida in our daily services isn't limited to the offerings. Whereas when it comes to the Musaf, it is. Those were instituted specifically for those offerings. I believe I've answered your question. 
And the only question, other question is a practical one. And so if some people hold this opinion and some people don't. Yes. Um, it, the, the practical question about whether or not a woman or a, a, a man under 19 can be Shelley Seaboard then would be answered by the rabbi of the synagogue that you're praying at. Uh, let's keep going. That's that's not where he's going on this. We can try and touch on this, but please let me finish this. It's okay. already seven in my time. I got like nine minutes no. to go. And look at this. Here's the here's the finish line. Let's do this. Okay. All right. The Yitchayev Mize, and not only that, for, uh, again, perforce from this, or another conclusion, the Fima de Kaimalan, from what is an accepted practice, it's an accepted principle. Kol hapatur min hadavar, anyone who is exempt from a specific mitzvah, a no motzi acherim yedei chobatam, is not in a position to help other people fulfill their obligation. And im kain, and if this is the case, ein leish pachot mi ben esrim shana, then someone, a man, a man who is younger than 20 years, la'avor lifnei ha'tevila, ha'teva, can, that's an expression, it means literally, means to pass before the ark, okay, before the, the, the yeah, ark is a cupboard, right, container, uh, and means lead the congregation. A person younger than 20 years old is not, in, is, is not cannot uh, lead the congregation uh, in, in prayer, but filat musafim, specifically regarding musaf, levotzi et hatzibur, to allow the congregation then to fulfill its obligation. Vahu davar, and he goes on to say, and this is something, chadash, this is a completely new idea, veniflama flama od, and is amazing. This is an amazing conclusion, but Sarich Iyun Rav and requires a great deal of investigation. So it is. I mean, it's amazing. This is this is like when he says but when he says Nifla, yes. uh, is that positive in it in current Hebrew that's a very positive uh, adjective. Do you think um, it's positive here? Um I that's a good question. I think he's just saying that whoever would have imagined this conclusion, whoever, you know, look where we started, which started where the Kohanim were obligated to bring machatzit shekel, and then through this care, painstaking analysis and deconstruction, he comes up with this notion. Now, remember, it's only a, this is what we mean by anaf kamina. This is what we mean, we call it anaf kamina meaning a prag practical difference. And what the practical difference is that if you hold what by, if you hold according to certain authorities, no problem. But if you, if, you know, in other words, it would not imply that, uh, that uh, children, you know, that, uh, men of less than 30, uh, less than 20 uh, cannot do this. It's all, and here it's even the opinion of, you know, these are great authorities. This, and not only that, right? Uh, the Vilna Gaon was saying, this is the Yerushalmi's position. Okay, so it's amazing. But this is a practical difference. And, you know, right now we're just discussing it on an academic, you know, from an academic uh, interest point of view. As I mentioned yesterday, I'm here to entertain. That's, uh, that's what I'm here to do. And uh, and Lauren, your question is yes. It would be a it would be an interesting question for the rabbi of a community to answer. What I want to add, though, is traditionally, traditionally, what service does the bar mitzvah lead in the morning? Musaf. Exactly. Exactly. But Rabbi, also you said the kaimala. I just kaimala. wanted. I'm pretty. I'm sure it's. I'm pretty sure it's kamala. Oh, <laughs> very good. I'm, I'm sure you're right. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, well, you can see that, you know, it things, things get really interesting, right? How one works this out. But part, um, you know, part of what I feel, you know, in terms of attempting to be authentic as possible and trying to, you know, and you know that the rule of law usually follows precedent. 
you want to try and and use precedent so that uh, think you know there there, there are probably many uh, many people who have written as to why law needs to work that way in order to be successful. At any rate, um, but also it's terribly important that it says it's a beautiful statement. It says lo bashamayim he that it's not that the Torah is not up in the heavens. And the idea is this, that if Torah becomes purely idealistic, that's what it means to say it's up in the heaven, then it's, in, it's ineffective. And that means you have to bring it down to earth and you have to bring it to where people are at. You can make all kinds of rules and, and you know, brilliant things, strategies and stuff, but if they do not, if people aren't willing to follow these things, if they're not willing to really internalize it, it is of limited value. And that's what they mean when they say, lo bashamayim hi, it's not up in the heavens. And that really is the, that is really the responsibility of the rabbi. That, that is a huge, you know, in, in part of what it is of the task of a rabbi is to try and help the community make, you know, bring Torah into their lives. But I thought you'd find this interesting, even though obviously um, there are, you know, these, these are sensitive issues. I find this very interesting because in some of the synagogues that I've worked at and known very little, by the way, in order to be able to be a leader mm -hmm. and so have relied heavily on the rabbi, um, they're imparting on the B'nai Mitzvah, that mm. it's incumbent upon them to donate part of their monies from their service um, mm. to the synagogue because it says so in the Torah. <laughs> Very interesting. I That's love it. Then, the, then a really, a really <laughs> learned Bar Mitzvah could say, yeah. no, I hold, <laughs> I hold like the Gra, I hold like the Vilna Gaon, who shows that the Yerushalmi is actually supporting that since I'm less than 20 years old, there's no, no connection. Well, you might. Of course, Machat Sita Shekel is a specific, a specific well, donation. But you know something, that really shows the abbreviation that so many synagogues are doing, not just the ones I've been in, but other synagogues, the abbreviation of things without a depth of knowledge to bring to these things that really do require a depth of knowledge to be transmitted to the next generations. And it's, I just find it very interesting, the but, stuff that is put on others in the name of the Torah. But in a way, this, this kind of calls into question the whole idea of counting women at all you know, of egalitarianism, of counting them in a minion at all, as, as I think Golda had already texted, of, of women rabbis, you know, of women's participation in Musaf and Kaddishes, mm -hmm. you know, um, it, you know, that's a, so egalitarianism kind of like driving to shul kind of breaks open a little bit of the traditional halacha yeah. and their reasons why we want to have it and, you know, and even then, you know, we're still called bot Kohen or bot Levi and, and there's still, you know, some attention to the old ways, but yet we're counted in the minion. And if we weren't, there would not be a minion of which we, you know, talk about. And there's just all this, it's a very deep and, and controversial issue that we could discuss for uh, huge amounts of time. <laughs> Yeah. Right, and when this, let me, since we're already running out of time now, by the way, uh, this okay. is my father's yard site. Today is my father's mm -hmm. yard site. I, uh, unfortunately, maybe almost typically, right, because this is the second time that I've gotten a date wrong and read, read a, a date in a wrong way. And so I'm actually observing it tonight. So starting tonight and tomorrow. Um, I would like to retroactively, because this was in my mind this morning, to make our study today in his honor. And I hope he would get a lot of nachas from what we actually studied today and what we discussed. Uh, going back, Lauren, to what you said, yes, 
it's true. And what the conservative movement tried to do, it through that law committee and through their, they, 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 in the past for sure, they have had incredible scholarship. I mean, Heschel, you know, was considered, he was a conservative Jew, essentially. He was part of the seminary, but we had other people, uh, like a really brilliant guy. Uh, I was told that this particular scholar who was associated with the seminary, that Orthodox rabbis would send him their shilas, their questions, the halachic questions. I think his name was uh, Lieberman. His name was uh, Shaul Lieberman, who was just incredible. I mean, the guy basically said that if you didn't know Middle Persian, you really couldn't understand halacha. I have uh, one or two of his books. They are impossible. They're impossible to read. They're so scholarly. It just, all right. What is so beautiful about what we're doing is you recognize the level of scholarship and the rigor with which this person is doing his stuff, but it's accessible, right? I mean, you, it, not only is it accessible, it's thoroughly entertaining. <laughs> that is an art. I mean, that yeah. is, but but the issue of the participation of women, etc. I mean, the the movement had had done everything it could to be authentic in looking at examples in the past. You know, in, in other words, trying to do what would be considered a a legitimate process in terms of moving the halacha along, because there's no doubt that halacha has changed over the years. And it needs to modify to, I mean, I've really bought this hook, line, and sinker, is that if I'm not, you know, if this, you know, loba shamayim he, that if I try to act like, a, you know, on that kind of level, um, I might as well say goodbye to my community, you know, forget, forget about making a living. I mean, just <laughs> the Torah is not going to, you know, it's not going to speak to anybody. saying it's a living thing. Yes, it, uh, is. it is a living thing. When we, uh, and and mo some people are upset when they started writing stuff down. Yes, it was an emergency. You know, because was, that that argument and the concert and the con conversations sort of stopped, or they got truncated, and you know they they got rifled. okay. It's a I, I'm taking up time now, and I'm I'm scared to do that yeah. in a way. But this is actually a very important point. Um, it has to do with the nature of the oral Torah. And I think I have a helpful rule of thumb that some of you have heard me say before. Okay. The subtitle of the written Torah is doing what doesn't come naturally. Okay. That's the subtitle of the written Torah. The and of the oral cir circumstances Correct. alter cases. That is exactly it. Right. The, the right. subtitle of the oral Torah is circumstances alter cases. That's <laughs> And, and you can prove okay. it again and again and again. Yes. And you have to look at circumstances. You have to. Mm -hmm. It can't, yep. it won't be live, it won't be alive. And the oral Torah is the, is the machinery by which you bring Torah from an idealistic point down into the pragmatic world. That's how you do it, is through oral Torah. If you didn't have oral Torah, it would always be nothing but idealism. And we wouldn't be able to actually internalize it. So circumstances have to do where you are, where you are, right? I mm -hmm. like to tell when people ask me, what am I today? You know, I say I'm a California conservative rabbi. Because conservative Judaism in California is different from conservative Judaism in the in the East or in the South or in, or the, in the Midwest. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, rabbi. Um, you said your father's yard site is today. It is. So text me or call me if you need me as number 10 to say uh, Kaddish. Okay, but I, I, am, I am observing it tomorrow. Circumstances okay. alter cases. Okay. And I, I, I know that a, a notification has gone out for a minion for tonight. And tonight. Okay. okay, same, same here. I can, I can also jump in if you okay. need Okay. I know there, there are going to be folks that will be here tomorrow morning. To, um, cool. Okay. Yeah. Here, Abyss, right. I didn't have a chance to say hello. Great to see you. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Lee. Stop the, stop the recording. Oh, yes.